Good morning, class. Good morning, Brother Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. What happens in Faith School is that our spirit is fed, our faith grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers. We're not victims, we're victorious ones. We're not overcome, we're overcomers. Hallelujah. More than conquerors, the scripture said, because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Get your Bible, get something to make a note with, come on into the classroom with us, turn everything else off for, for the time, and let's release faith. You're going to get something good today. Father, we thank you so much for being so gracious and faithful to us, sustaining us, keeping us like you have. Our eyes are on you. We rely on you. We trust in you. And you never fail. Thank you for taking care of us and giving us what we need today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look with me again, please, in Luke, the 13th chapter, in our 16th individual case of healing in our study that we're calling Faith for Healing. And uh, it begins here in Luke 13, 10, the healing of the woman with the spirit of infirmity. The scripture says that Jesus was teaching in the, uh, the synagogue, one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And like we saw before, he did a lot of this, a lot of teaching, a lot of preaching. And why? Because that's how faith comes. And faith is the key to overcoming, to receiving. And verse 11, while he's teaching there in the synagogue on the Sabbath day, behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. In, in the Amplified, it says it like this, there was a woman who there who for 18 years had had an infirmity caused by a spirit, a demon of sickness. She was bent completely forward and utterly unable to straighten herself up or to look upward. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are released from your infirmity. Then he laid his hands on her, and instantly she was made straight, and she recognized and thanked and praised God. Hallelujah. How many believe this happened exactly like we're reading? This is not a myth. This is not a fairy tale. This is not a parable. This is history. And it's more than history. It was selected out of all the thousands of people that were healed in Jesus' ministry to be recorded by the Holy Spirit for all generations to come. And so it is worthy of our careful examination and of our meditation because we see what was wrong with her. This is one of the clearest cases. It just it tells you a spirit was involved in this. And Jesus said, Satan bound the woman. Now this is so far different from how a lot of the church is saying that God may put sickness on you to teach you something. Well, what passage did they get that from? <laughs> right? I mean, we're talking about scripture here, right? Where did they get that? Where, where did you ever see Jesus say, I'm sorry, I got to do this, but I'm going to minister the sickness to you and you're not going to enjoy it, but it's going to teach you something. It's going to never, never. And in order for something to be scriptural, you know what you need for it? Scriptures. Scriptures. At least one. Is that right? And really in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let every word be established. And, and folks don't realize that they, they have completely swallowed these lies because people have preached them and, and people have written books to that effect and made movies to that effect. And it is not in the word. It's actually contradicting what the master himself said. We need to get it settled, class, once and for all. Sickness is evil. 
Are y'all with me, class? Yes. Sickness is of the enemy. Yes. Disease is of the devil. Yes. Always. It's never from God. Now, like we said, in order for something to be scriptural, you need scripture. And so we, we know we got scripture right here, but I want to go further. I want to make sure you know it's established in the mouth of multiple witnesses. In uh, Deuteronomy 7, you don't have to turn there, but they'll put it on the, the amazing appearing <laughs> chalkboard. <laughs> uh, Deuteronomy 7, 15, it says, uh, the Lord will take away from you all sickness and put none of the what? Evil diseases of Egypt, which you know upon you, but will lay them upon all them that hate you. Diseases are evil. Well, does evil things come from God? Is, are evil things God's will in our life? Well, if he wants one kind of evil, why wouldn't he want another kind of evil? And how do we know which evils to resist and which evils to receive? No, evil is evil. God doesn't want any evil in your life. And disease, say it out loud, disease, disease. Is, evil. is evil. Now, we got this connotation in our vernacular about evil, but really evil is the same word we would use for bad in our vernacular. Bad. And... Um, in, in, in Psalm 41 8, Psalm 41 8, so we got one witness in Deuteronomy. Here's another one in Psalms. Psalm 41 8 said, he was saying his enemies were saying about him, an evil disease, say they, cleaves fast to him, and now that he lies, he'll rise up no more. He was having some issues, and he said that was what was being said. And you see that in this woman that had this spirit of infirmity, something was clinging to her, right? Mm -hmm. Something was cleaving fast to her and binding her and, and holding her down. It was unseen, but it was real. And she, she apparently hadn't been aware of it, didn't know what to do about it. But Jesus knew how to take care of it. Take care of it. Hallelujah. Uh, the Young's literal which is Dr. Young, author of the famous Young's Concordance. This is the way he translated Psalm 41.8. A thing of Belial is poured out on him, instead of calling it an evil disease. A thing of Belial. How in the world did we get from this to people saying God put cancer on them to teach them something? I mean... It doesn't take in any depth of understanding to see what cancer does and know it's evil. Right? It's evil. And all disease is evil. We need to get it established. Don't we? There's a whole bunch of the church world out there confused about this. And you say, well, I don't know that I agree with you, preacher. I didn't write Deuteronomy 7. I didn't write Psalm 41. And I didn't write these others I'm about to read. Right? I didn't write it. You didn't write it. But what people have done is written something else. In their mind, they're trying to explain why things happen or why things didn't happen. And so their conclusion is, well, it must be God's will. We just don't understand it. No, it never was God's will. It's evil. Sickness is evil which is why it's right to fight it. That's why we support doctors and nurses and researchers. And then why? We're all fighting the same thing, right? If you really believe that the sickness that's in your body is from God, you should not try to get well. I'm not making a joke. If you really believe that it's from God, then you are defying and rebelling against God's will and plan to try to get rid of it. So you'd be hopelessly confused, right? Mm -hmm. You shouldn't even go to the doctor. You shouldn't even seek treatment if you really believe it's from God. But you better get some help. Get all the help you can get. Get rid of it and live. Get healed. 
Overcome it. That's the will of God. I said, that's the will of God. Use every tool at your resource. Pray about it as the Lord leads you, but fight it. Fight it. As they say, tooth and nail. Fight it. Fight it. Don't just give up and lay down and say, well, whatever's God's will. This is God's will. Your healing. Your deliverance. He's in the loosening business. In the liberating business. In how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing what? All All that what? That were oppressed of the devil. So here's a third witness. It's called evil in Deuteronomy. Disease is. It's called evil disease. It's called a thing of the devil in Psalm 41. And in Acts 10, 38, it says all the people that Jesus ministered healing to that were sick and diseased were satanically oppressed. According to the Bible, sickness and disease is evil. According to the Bible, sickness and disease is a thing of Belial, a thing of the devil. According to the Bible, Acts 10, 38, sickness and disease is satanic oppression. So don't tell me it's from God, right? Satanic oppression is not from God. Evil things are not, are not the will of God. In Job 2, 7, if you remember what happened with him, it said, Job 2, 7, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Who did that? Satan. Just as clear as you can read. Satan. Satan did it to him. Satan smote him with sore boils, disease, bad stuff, evil stuff, not the will of God. So we, then we see here in... Um, our Luke 13 account, she was, had this uh, spirit of infirmity. Go back with me if you would. Look at our text again in Luke 13. When the ruler of the synagogue was indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said what he said. Verse 16, Jesus said, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, they had let it slip, they'd gotten away from it, But they had a covenant with God. And one of the ways God had revealed himself is through his covenant names. These compound redemptive names, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shammah, uh, Jehovah Rapha means the Lord who heals you. Hallelujah. They had a covenant of healing. Through, you know, uh, and it it went all the way back to Abraham. Uh, Abraham believed in healing. Actually, Abraham prayed for kings and they got healed. Right? And Abraham healed, excuse me, the Lord healed people in Abraham's household. Goes all the way back to there. When did God change? I mean, he used to be a great healing God. (laughs) Right? I mean, he used to be such a good God. He'd heal you. He'd make you rich. He made Abraham rich. He'd protect you. When did all that change? And then never has changed. People changed. Religion changed. Men got goofy ideas. But God changes not. Perfection doesn't need to change. Right? He doesn't change. But he said, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom what? Satan has bound. Lo, these 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. Evil disease, Deuteronomy 7. Evil disease, Psalm 41, a thing of the devil. Satan did it, Job 2. Acts 10, 38, satanic oppression. Uh, Here, Luke uh, 13, 16, satanic bondage. That's more than two or three witnesses, right? Somebody said, well, Brother Keith, I I think I got it the first time. You said, no, (laughs) not good enough you don't. Why? Because most of the world's confused about this. And sadly, most of the church. And as long as you are entertaining the idea that you being sick 
might be God's will or might be God's plan, you're in trouble. You are stuck. You will not be able to have faith to get free and be loosed because you will have yielded, maybe without realizing it, you're yielding to that. You're giving place to that. And that's what the devil is counting on. He's counting on you not knowing the truth enough that he can lie to you and trick you into taking something from him that hurts you and destroys you and you acting like he doesn't even exist and blaming it on God. This is happening all over. And it's tragic. It's tragic. Especially, you know, the unsaved people, you could understand that. They don't even know what's going on. They're not even spiritually alive or aware. But us, the church, we got authority. I said, we got authority. And the spirit who is in us, he is far mightier than any spirit of infirmity or any of these little things. They are nothing before his mighty power. And if we would but stand up and resist it and say, no, you have no right. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It's the property of God. You've got no right here, and I command you, stop. Oh, friend, if, if the people of God would start standing up and doing that at home and on the job and in church, things would change. Things would change. We don't have to wait. We can do it right now. I said right now. Right here, wherever you are, whatever's going on, I want you to get it settled. Said out loud, it's settled. settled. Forever settled. settled. In the Word of God, God. sickness Sickness is of the devil. devil. According to Scripture, scripture. disease is evil. evil. Sickness is of the devil. Sickness is is satanic bondage. Sickness is satanic oppression. It is written. And I believe it. So sickness, disease, you cannot stay in my body. You cannot stay in my life. I command you, stop in your operation. Cease in your functioning. And leave me in Jesus' name. Put your hands on your body. Say out loud, body, be healed in Jesus' name. Now just leave your hands there for a moment. See, that's what Jesus did. He proclaimed that she was loosed and free. And so she is, whether she looks and feels like it or not. Then he reaches over and touches her. And anointing flows. And that's when immediately she's loosed and made straight. It was based on the truth. But you've proclaimed that. Now put your hands on yourself. Because it's written also. Believers would lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. You're a believer. huh? Whose hands are these? Believer hands. Is that right? So we got all the boxes checked. We're good. Say it out loud. Body. Be healed. Anything. That's been damaged. damaged. Be restored. Be Be renewed. Be Be made whole. Be made made strong. strong. By the anointing of God. By the the presence of God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blood. Blood. Be cleansed. cleansed. Lungs. Lungs. Be clear. clear. Heart. Heart. Be normal. normal. And function normal. Normally, normally. and be healthy. healthy. Nervous system, system. be restored. Be Be made perfect perfect. 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 and function correctly. correctly. Brain, Brain. be restored. restored. Be cleansed, be Be quickened, quickened. and made right right. and function perfectly. Function fully. Function, fully. Function, normally. Function normally. I command you. I command you. In, the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It is his will. It is his will. Jesus, Jesus. The head of the church. The of the church. Oh hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Let's go further. Say it, say it out loud. Uh, intestines, intestines. Stomach. stomach digestive, system. digestive system. Be corrected. Be, corrected. Be, restored. Be restored. Be made healthy. Be, made healthy. Be, healthy. Be, healed. Be healed and work perfectly. And work perfectly. Kidneys. Kidneys. Be healthy, be healthy. Function, fully function fully, and normally. And normally. Liver, Liver, be cleansed, be cleansed. Detoxified, detoxified, and become healthy, become healthy. And, flourish. and flourish, and function, a hundred percent, normally. Joints, Joints. Bones. bones, muscles. muscles. Be cleared, be cleared of infection, of, infection, of, inflammation, of inflammation, be cleansed, be cleansed and, be and be healthy and strong and, strong and, normal, and normal and function fully, function fully. be loosed, be loosed liberated, liberated in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands and begin to thank God. Just begin to thank God. Thank you, Lord. You say that loud, Lord. You're my, Lord, you're my Savior. Lord, you're my healer. Just keep thanking Him for being your healer. Lord, thank you for being my healer. Thank you that you forgive all my sins and iniquities. And the same scripture says you heal all my diseases. You even renew my youth and my strength. Thank you. Come on, lift your hands. Don't be silent. Lift your hands and say, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you, Lord, for restoring me. Thank you, Lord, for making me able. Hallelujah. Able and strong and free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you notice it said when Jesus laid hands on her, And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Made straight and what? Huh? Made straight and what? Well, does God get more glory in her being bent over, being oppressed, being satanically oppressed, satanically bound, being so limited? in? Does God get glory out of that? Not a word said about him getting glory out of it. It was when... She was loosed. Does God get more glory out of you being oppressed, depressed, wanting to stay in bed, pull the the windows, not answer the phone because you don't feel like getting out, you're too sick? Or does he get more glory in you being usable to him? You actually have some strength and some ability that you can get up and go do things for other people, help. His people help the church, help the reach, the unreached. Which one does he get more glory out of? Sick or healed? Broke or having a full supply? Which one? Huh? Confused and depressed or free and joyful and peaceful? Which one brings God more glory? Lost or saved? It's not a trick question, right? It's an easy answer. It's like we were talking about obvious, the goodness of God versus the evil of the enemy. Oh, it's good to know it. And man, when you, when you come to accepting it and letting it be settled in you forever, things come off of you and you are truly loosed emotionally and mentally because you're no longer struggling with these questions that people think there are no answers to. You are free. And now... You know what to resist, and you know what to receive. You know what to stand against, and you know what to yield to. And that changes your life radically. Say it out loud. Thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Here I am. Make me strong for your service. Add to me abundant ability and resources. That I may be useful to you. A vessel. Meet. And fit. For the master's use. Hallelujah. Let's.
Let's let the rest of our days be used to the maximum for good purpose and good service. Not limited, but fully supplied. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fully able to do something for him. And our time is up again. Passes by pretty quick, doesn't it? Well, make another good strong confession. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome, and we did some of that today. I overcome the world by faith. I am strong. Say it again. I am strong. One more time. I am strong in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. Come back again soon. We're not done with this. We got more. We'll see you back here at Faith School. I've really enjoyed being with you again in, in Faith School this week. You can just sense that we're getting stronger in our spirit. I know a lot of you are partners with us, and that gives us a right to believe with you and join in faith with you for your finances. And I want to do that right now. Uh, we studied this week the scripture that Jesus talked about, He giving us the keys to the kingdom, that whatever we bind would be bound, whatever we loose would be loosed. And you want to bind up the enemy interfering with your finances, and you want to loose the ministering spirits, the angels, to help you out. So say it out loud with me. Uh, Satan, I command you, take your hand off my finances. I bind you. I forbid your interference. And holy angels, go and influence and cause the resources to come into my life. I claim abundance in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. When you do this in faith, and I'm joining with you, things are affected in the spirit. These spiritual influences are real. And so I believe something happened when we said this, and I'm expecting with you, it's coming. Abundance you've given, and it's coming back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, men will give to you favor, things, deals, something's on you. The blessing of the Lord and the goodness of the Lord is showing up in your life. We'll see you again soon back here at Faith School. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941 702-7390.